So today what I'd like to do is present a minuet for two violas de moire in E flat major. And I'd like to show you how I've set up my sympathetic strings for this particular piece. I want to support the tonality of the piece as much as possible. And because there is a short section of this minuet, which is in E flat minor, I'm going to tune my sympathetics to, well, not quite a scale. Uh, so first of all, I'm tuned in D major. And at the moment, I've got my sympathetic strings damped. So I'm just going to play that chord again. And there's still quite a lot of resonance there, and that's because the there's many A's and many D's, and they support one another and they prolong the vibrations. So I'll play it a third time and I'll damp it immediately. And you heard a little squeak of a D going on after I damped the playing strings. And that is because there are three sets actually of sympathetic strings on the viola de moire. I only have the main set damped, but then there is a set that's behind the peg box. And then there's a set between the bridge and the tailpiece. And it might be coming from there. I, might, I have no idea, really. Uh, and uh, uh, these are, you know, sets of strings that sometimes get used in extended technique pieces. Uh, but I've never had occasion to use them myself. So what I'd like to do now is um, actually play my sympathetic strings as I have them tuned here. C, D, E flat, G flat, G natural, E flat, B flat. And this time I'd like to um, illustrate one of the uh, kind of the definition of the viola de moire which was very from the very beginning it is a special instrument with a set of resonating strings that serve to color and prolong the sound and so let's just hear that for a second so i'll play now the set of um, sympathetic string pitches but i'll play them on the playing strings <laughs> have an F. And you see, I have to play them very precisely in tune for the resonance to occur. And you also hear on my top B flat that there's a kind of a little bit of a Eastern sort of extra wine to the reverberation and that's probably because my bridge is starting to tilt towards the fingerboard and the hole through which the, the sympathetic string travels so it starts to open at the bottom and there is a little bit of extra rattling that happens there which is that wine so uh, later I'll have to straighten my bridge and so you can he already hear there um, that that the sound of the playing string dies quicker than that of the resonating string. That little rattle, that little gnawing and nasal sound that lasts longer than the tone of the playing string. And uh, I've been asked in concerts why that is and I I've always said the following explanation, and I don't know whether it's correct or not, so um, you may want to find a friendly physicist and uh, check with them. Uh, but basically, uh, we have gut or, you know, synthetic gut strings as playing strings. These strings are uh, rigid, more, more, um, more inflexible 
than the wire playing strings. The wire playing strings are quite thin and they're relatively more flexible, so they lose their energy due to uh, internal friction slower than the playing strings. And that's how the viola de morta gets its definition of not just coloring, but prolonging the sound. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to say today. And uh, this particular minuet I've chosen because it, um, well, first of all, it's an E flat and still too many people think that the viola de morta is trapped in D major. And the interesting thing to me is although my sympathetic strings are quite uh, restrained in the octave that in you know around middle C um, that doesn't seem to matter this uh, this piece is a, a an interesting juxtaposition of very low registers and very high registers and those strings in the middle register still function to support the sound and one last thing which is Usually when I make these recordings, I add a little artificial reverb on GarageBand. But this time uh, I'm going to play the first time through the A section with no reverb, and then the second time through I'll add the reverb that I usually add. Uh, so you'll get just the resonance of the instrument the first time through, and the second time you'll get the instrument's resonance plus GarageBand's resonance. Hope you enjoy. Thank you. 